Hello and welcome back to my studio again. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to share with you another one of my warm-up exercises. This time my warm-up will consist of using one colour, that's Payne's Grey, to paint this imaginary winter landscape. I've used salt effects in the front to create these little frost blossoms and I have made a moon or a sun, it could be if your sky was a bit lighter, peeping out from behind the trees. Um, this kind of warm-up exercise is a great way just to get into the flow of working and painting wet in wet to practice your brush strokes, your water control, all this sort of thing before you then embark on a more planned painting. I'm using Milford cold, fre cold pressed watercolour paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees, so gravity will help with the painting. I'm using my large wash brush. It's a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch Mottler brush to wet the page all over. I'm wetting the sky all over, uh, but the area where I'll be painting the land, I'm leaving a few dry patches. This will give me a range of soft and hard edges. If you remember back to the finished demo I, that I showed you at the beginning, um, there was quite a lot of blue as well as greys and black tones. That's because the colour that I'm using, um, Cotman Payne's Grey, is made up of a black and a blue. And basically, when you use a lot of water, the colours can split out and you're left with these beautiful blue colours, which I'll hopefully demonstrate today. And that's why I particularly like to use or prefer to use Cotman for these demos because of that beautiful effect of the colour split. So you can see I'm building up my tree line, just dabbing on the paint here and there, trying to leave some spaces between it for sort of sky holes or gaps between the trees. Great big sweep of paint across the, to create a sort of instant foreground. So what I'm practicing with this warm up is what I call something and nothing, where I'm just letting the paint kind of do what it likes, but with sort of considered brush strokes, if you see what I mean. I've sort of got a plan, tipping and tilting the board just to get the paint to run in the direction that I want it to but only creating the suggestions of these shapes and then trying to bring these suggested shapes together into a painting at the end. I've laid my board flat just for a little while and just try putting in a sky. I don't really want to paint over these trees here, but I might have to. I'll see if I can get a sky that looks okay by painting around them because if I paint into these trees, they will just soften and diffuse into the sky a little bit too much. So I'm being fairly careful. With my board flat, those trees are sort of bursting out a little bit too much. So I've raised my board up again. These warm-up exercises are really good for getting you used to the way watercolour flows, the way the paint moves, all that kind of thing. And to be honest, it's really hard to actually paint in watercolour unless you begin to understand the relationship between the water, the paint, the paper, gravity, the brushes. And that's what these sorts of warm-up exercises are all about. And of course, you get the valuable exercise of learning to manage your tonal values from light, mid-values and dark values to really help make the painting pop. Now, can you see where I used a palette knife to sweep through the foreground to create some texture and field lines? You can see where the blue and black has split out quite remarkably in this single colour of Payne's Grey. And using the palette knife just to sort of shape in a few tree trunks along that tree line. So the palette knife can be used in a way like a brush. And then, of course, you can use the tip or the um, corner of a plastic store card, the end of a paintbrush or your fingernail to scrape through the rich paint and create these lovely white or lighter tree trunks through these distant trees. That just gives us a few highlights. And of course, it gives us this lovely um, contrast or counter change where the lighter marks contrast beautifully against the rich dark paint. A 
Of course, if you don't like to use your palette knife or some other sort of um, pointed tool to create these kind of scraped shapes, then you can wait until your painting is completely dry and go in with darker paint and a paintbrush, or you can go in with white gouache if you want some lighter branches. And then just scraping through the damp paint to create some grasses, brambles, weeds, more sort of just suggestions, something and nothing. Remember, this is a warm up, so it doesn't really matter if things don't work. It's a great opportunity to experiment and to try different things. Taking the pressure off yourself means that you can really enjoy yourself and have fun, not worrying too much as to whether you produce um, a finished painting, just warming up and reminding yourself of the magic of watercolour. Softening back with a paper towel in a few places, dabbing off the paint, sort of lifting it out in places, just a small amount. And the next thing I'm going to do is um, lay my board flat and then have a look at my foreground and make sure that the paint is not too wet and not too dry because I'm going to sprinkle a few finely ground um, salt crystals into the paint and what they'll do is they will repel the paint and create these lovely little blooms and blossoms and suggestions of frost patterns, ferns, that sort of thing. So just a small sprinkle. Wait if your paint looks too wet um, and if it's too dry, you've missed your opportunity. So it's that kind of midpoint between wet and dry when you'll get the best effects. But it's quite unpredictable and probably um, not archival. So best not to do this too much if you want your paintings to last 50 to 100 years. Now, just before I leave it to dry, I'm going to create my moon or sun. Um, just a little round patch lifted out from next to one of the trees. I've got a pen, it's a fine liner, with a flat round end to the cap. I've covered it in a little bit of tissue. I'm just going to dab that onto the damp sky. Lift it out. That's not really given me a very strong impression, so I'm going to go in again a little bit harder. And that's given me a nice light mark that I can turn into a sun or a moon. Just making sure I've dabbed the paint out fully in that area. Because my sky is a little bit light and it'll lighten up even more as it dries, I think I'm going to enhance that area a little. So I'm gently dabbing at the damp paint just to give me some sort of effects of almost sort of wispy cloud. That also is drying the paper off a little bit. And now I'm going in with a tiny bit of grey paint, working around that circle to build up a little bit of shadow in the wispy cloud that I created by lifting out the paint with a tissue. I can soften the edges of this cloud so it doesn't look too dark, but you should see soon that the moon or sun is starting to pop out a bit. I can drag that colour back behind the branches of the tree as well so that it sort of looks like cloud or even just a shadow of some fine twigs around the ends of the branches. It's very important not to use a wet brush at this point so that your paint mix is pale but very dry. Dab it onto a tissue first because the last thing I want to do is create cauliflower marks by introducing very wet paint to that area. And I like that effect. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely. And here's the dry painting and I'm really pleased with the way the moon is standing out. And I'm really pleased with my salt effects for this lovely experimental warm up. I'm really enjoying playing around with these different tricks and seeing what happens. So just a few finishing touches now. And the most important one is to pull a few branches across that bright white moon. This pushes the moon back into the background. 
And for this I've dipped into a rich mix of my Payne's Grey with my size 2 rigger brush and I'm painting these very fine lines, enhancing some of the branches and then I'll work on a few of the trunks and enhance them and darken them up as well. Remember, if any of these um, wet on dry marks that you paint, e.g. wet paint onto a dry painting, if any of them go on a little bit too dark, you can always just dab them off with a tissue before they dry. So just continuing now to add a few darks to those tree trunks that I etched in earlier, and this just helps to bring those trunks down um, across those sort of lighter areas of snow so they stand out a bit more. So nearly done now, and just a bit of shadow, I think, across the, the base underneath those trees. Again, using the rigger, not too much, but just enough to bed them into the snow with a bit of shadow. I can do the same um, under these trees on the right, and with paler, slightly paler paint with the trees over on the left. And that's the end of the warm-up. As always, the fun part is removing the tape and seeing the painting with a clean white border. Always exciting once those sort of marks on the tape are removed and we see it almost as if it was in a frame or a mat. And I'm really pleased with that. I feel warmed up. I feel practised. I feel like I've gotten used to the way water and paint um, work their magic together and I'm ready for a day in the studio working on some of my own paintings. If we look a bit closer you can see that wonderful split between the black and the blue and this is Payne's Grey is the magic ingredient here made by Cotman. This particular brand I think is the best at splitting out so if you like that effect then I recommend Cotman. If you're interested in seeing what other Payne's Grey brands look like, then take a look at my swatching playlist and you'll see one there for Payne's Grey. I'm really happy with the moon. I think it works really nicely. The enhancements that we did by lifting out a little bit of very faint cloud and then by darkening up the contrast around the moon has worked really nicely to prepare it to have the tree branches just painted across it, which makes it a really nice point of interest or focal point. Don't forget that if you use salt, use a clean dry brush to brush any sort of stray crumbs from the painting if it hasn't all dissolved. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please leave us a like and um, a comment. We love to read them. And please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps with our reach. And a huge thank you to all our amazing supporters on Patreon. We couldn't run the channel without you. And if you're interested in supporting us, please follow either of the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.